Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Coins. Today I'm reviewing Rear Window from Funko Games. Rear Window, based on Alfred Hitchcock's movie, is a three to five player game of two asymmetric sides as one side is the director trying to give clues to the other side in what is either a cooperative or competitive slash semi-cooperative experience as you go through it. That's a lot to unpack there, even including the player count, which technically is a three to five player game, but I see no reason whatsoever why you cannot play this as a two player game at all. Like genuinely, like I don't, I don't understand it. I don't even think it's best at three to five. I think two is a totally viable player count. It might be one of my favorite player counts. Probably three is my favorite player count. And then two after that, four and five would be less fun than two in my opinion that's a long little monologue around the player count i just don't know why they put three to five in the box when it's clearly a two to five player game with that said this game like i said already is a two to five game a two to five player game that is mostly cooperative but does have a semi-cooperative version depending on how the hands are dealt but let's teach it as a cooperative experience first and then i'll teach you how the uh, semi-co-op things messes you up so Generally, in this game, what you're trying to do is you're trying to give clues to your teammates. As the clue giver, as the director, you're trying to give clues to your teammates to help them figure out a, a little board over here of various characters and roles. To that end, you're going to have eight characters in play. There's going to be eight different characters. And for example, this would be one of the characters. That little person over there, I don't know if it's focusing. It's not focusing. Let's see if we do this over here. You can see two of the characters in play just like that. You're also going to have various roles in play. So for example, we have the animal lover and the photographer. These are just different names of the various rules in play and again not really focusing well if we cover it we can there we go and there we go like there animal lover and photographer those are gonna be different rules in play now you have a whole bunch of these you're gonna have around 12 rules in play i believe or maybe i have to double check the number i think it's 12 rules in play and then you have the eight different characters and then from there as the director you have a hand of eight cards one two three four five six seven eight and you're going to go ahead and start playing the cards down into these spots to try to illustrate which section is which so for example looking at my cards over here i'm gonna go ahead and let's just try to figure out what we can do you know what i'm gonna go ahead and place this over here we're gonna do that there that seems reasonable uh you know we can throw that over there as well and then we're gonna throw hmm we got that oh that's gonna be tricky Oh, that's not as tricky. Let's go ahead and throw that over there. And we'll explain everything as we go through it. We're not going to go through all the rounds of play, but it will it will mostly make sense, possibly, maybe, as we go through it. Oh, that definitely seems like that's over there. But then from there, how are we going to do more than that? Hmm, that's going to be tricky. It's definitely going to be tricky as we do this over here. Definitely going to be tricky. But we're still in trouble because we still don't have ways to uh, further illustrate... Hmm, that could be relevant for that. Oh, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and toss that down there. Okay, great, great, great. And then I just don't know what to do, so I will go ahead. I'm going to use one of my director tokens. You get three director tokens, and I'm going to go ahead and discard these three cards and draw three more. Now, that is a little early in the game for that. Normally, I wouldn't really do that, but let's do it anyway just because I want to try to uh, figure out that. First of all, I'll teach you that director tokens exist, so there is that aspect. But I'm not helping myself here. I'm not helping myself at all. Let's go ahead and place this down over here, and we'll see what happens. And this will all make sense more as we go through it, but really, I think... I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and play this card face down. I have one more card, but I'm pretty sure that's because I can't count because I should not have one more card. Now I went ahead and placed down eight cards. I placed one card face down because I thought this would only throw people off my trail. These other seven cards I put down with such an intent, given my personal director board that you can't see, but I can. I know where the various characters are, and I'm trying to illustrate through the cards I play what's going on on the board, but there's always a double side. There's always a catch to everything I do. So for example... These two cards I placed over here because I'm trying to illustrate the person and the fact that they're an animal lover. So they have two animals in the photo. They have a person over here that matches her and the photo, therefore animal lover and person. The problem is that same person is also in the frame from the neighboring place, so maybe it could have been her who's in the other room as well, but alternatively, I'm trying to illustrate the fact that she's a photographer by placing that there. Although there's also a whole bunch of gems, a whole suitcase full of, you know, money over there, so maybe you thought that they were the thief, but no, actually, I wanted the thief to be illustrated from these cards over here, so I paid to place down this little suitcase of gems over here, as well as, you know, the handcuffs and whatnot. So ideally, and maybe that could be the police officer. There is a police officer character. But you're trying to illustrate things through the stuff on the cards through enough commonality that can help people. Now, over here, I couldn't think of any good clues to get the person. But hopefully, the broken things in this in this photo over here and these two cards kind of help illustrate that the person over there is a klutz, which it is the klutz. Now, this is where the players on the other side start talking, comparing notes. They know the eight possible characters. They know the 12 possible rules. And they, so they start taking tokens and saying, you know what? I think that the uh, animal lover is this one over here. Let me just grab a token over here. So you grab an animal lover token, and I think the animal lover is this person because they picked up 
only one animals. Well, actually, there's animals here too, but these ones look more like they're like a, a group of them. Two animals is better than one, so they put that down. But then maybe they incorrectly place down the fact that this person is down in this spot over here. They're going to th go through their guesses, placing eight different guesses down of these different spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you, as the director, will mark how many they got correct. Maybe they got three correct, at which point you go to the next day, you drop a hand of cards, and you repeat the process again. But this time, you're able to play off the clues that they had. They went ahead and they put down the fact that the red lady's over here. Well, maybe you double down throwing the red lady again over here. And they start noticing a trend. Well, if she's the red lady here and she's the red lady there, maybe my initial thing is wrong and it's probably her. Maybe over here, this animals, they didn't pick up on that. And so I go ahead and place more animals, hoping they'll pick up on that. I got the klutz down and they maybe go ahead and do that. So I throw down one more picture over here. Maybe the next time round, I make sure to throw down one picture of something broken. If I can find it, let me see, see if I can find something broken over here. And then one photo illustrating the person. There we go. So I throw down these photos over here, one doubles down the fact that there's something broken again, so they're like, yes, that's right, the klutz was indeed correct, but I also threw a photo of the person who is the klutz, and maybe they pick up on that, maybe they don't. And so through the process of four rounds of play, you're able to build off the clues, build off the guesses, and slowly paint up a narrative. You're like, oh, across those four rounds of play, we have these pictures, we're always in those spots, and it's a slowly reacting to how the players guess, which means you're developing this sequence and pattern. Every single card on the table could reflect multiple things. It could reflect multiple people, multiple professions, multiple stuff going on in the game, but how you play and react to the players is going to be a big part of the game. Now, these four players also have abilities. You can have these four watchers in play, and they all come into play with abilities. You can use those abilities during the game to get a little bit more information in the game to help pinpoint things you might not otherwise know, and this is where we move to the fact that it might not be a cooperative game. You see, in a cooperative game, the way you win is you win by getting all eight things correct. Ideally, you go through the game, by the time you get to the end of the fourth day, you've gotten all eight things correct across four iterations, you have correctly guided your accomplices, your teammates, to who is there. You haven't said anything, you've just played the right cards at the right time, you've used your three director's tokens to cash things in, everything's going swimmingly. The problem is, you might have the murderer in play. You see, the murderer token is always potentially in play. From those 12 tokens, from those 13 tokens, the murderer is one of them, which means you always have a potential murder in play. If the murder is in play, it's no longer cooperative, it's semi-cooperative meaning you could have both teams lose if you don't play things well. In the semi-cooperative game, in the game where I'm the murderer and you don't know that I'm the murderer, or there was a murder and I'm covering it up, in that game, you both teams will lose if you don't get at least six guesses correct. So we are still aligned in the fact that I still want to communicate to you as effectively as possible in the game to help guide you to as many good clues as possible, because if I don't, if you don't get at least six correct, well, we lose the game. So I'm still trying to be helpful-ish. The problem is, if you, you win at that point, if you correctly guess where the murder is and who the murderer is, whereas I could correct, I win if you do not figure that out by the end of the fourth day. So those are the two ways the game can play out, and you don't know which game it is. Well, I guess if you're the director, you know which game it is as soon as you start. If you're on the other side, if you're the watchers, you don't know which game it is until you get to the end and see whether you correctly guessed everything, including and up to whether there was a murderer in play. And that is basically how you play Rare Window, which brings us to the review, starting off with ease of play. Rulebook is incredibly easy to go through. Uh, the game is mostly, I mean, it's a handful of pages. Everything's clearly laid out. It's basically a game which you're going to be helping people by playing cards and giving them clues without actually talking as you go through the game. A uh, gameplay runs about 45 to 60 minutes. It can go a little faster. It can go a little slower. It depends on the players. It depends on how many people are at the table. In a two-player game, which is technically not a player count, you can even get the game down to a nice half an hour because there's less, less team talk and communication talk as you go through it. Past that, as far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, I like the sense of iterative communication. I like the sense that you both have a guest and I have a degree of communication and guiding you and helping you, but then also that as we go through the days, I'm slowly iterating upon what you've done. I'm reacting to how you guessed. I'm not just giving you eight cards for a specific area. I'm giving you eight cards based on how you guessed and what you seem to be doing. There's a degree of uh, unspoken communication because I can react to what you're doing, just not through saying things, rather through playing cards. I like that sense of iterative communication. I like the puzzly hints that the cards give, and I like the fact that the cards give an absolute ton of information in them about various people, various professions. They all allude to like four or five different things in each card, giving you room for a lot of communication and a lot of guidance as you go through the game. I really appreciate that and the ability to double down or discern from previous
previous clues. Again, that iterative information really just gives you a lot more going on. There's also one thing, one more thing I didn't really talk about. Once you start getting better at the game, there are these advanced clues where you throw down an action, kind of. You know, this person's breaking up with, and you put down another token. So suddenly there's another person or action in play. Those add a degree of further difficulty because you're trying to allude to another person with a degree of verbiage, which can change how the game is played. And again, everyone knows the hypothetical possibilities in play, but how you actually narrow it down, that's significantly more complicated. So overall, just a lot of solid is non-verbal communication in this game that works well around what's going on. As far as what I don't like in the game, First of all, I don't love the direct art style versus more artsy, vague hints. Meaning, for example, you have things like this person's art in the photo. That is that specific person. There is no vague hint. There's no there's no kind of meta metaphysical kind of hinting of this could mean that or that could mean this. Everything does have four or five possible references, but most of it is fairly direct. That relates to the police officer and the klutz. That directs to the that relates to the art lover, the thief, and the you know the woman in red. You have all these ways where everything kind of direct relates to specific things. Now that is a pro and a con. For me personally it's a bit of a con because it turns it into a bit more of a guessing game rather than a straight up interpretive game. Rather than having a bunch of things that kind of give me that sense of something, it's straight up a question of hey we have the woman in red, woman in red is over here and over here, which one is the woman in red or possibly neither. It's a bit more direct and it comes down directly to that iterative communication. I'll also say I vastly prefer it as a cooperative game. I find that when you, do it, when you suddenly show up as a semi-cooperative experience where one person has a murderer in play and trying to uh, fake around that, I find it makes the game not just only not just harder, but just less rewarding. I find if you want the game to be harder, you can add in more and more of those purple clues. Those will really give you an extra thing to puzzle your way through that gives you a degree of reward to the experience. Versus the murder, I found... Uh, and it could be the kind of thing that maybe I just need to play it more, maybe I need to get my hands more dirty as, the, as I go through the game, but I find that once there's a murder in play, it ends up being the director almost always is going to win because they have so much more control over the ability to try to push people in the wrong direction, and it's already hard enough to get all eight clues correct as a purely cooperative experience, when you throw in that murder element, it just makes it harder. I find I drastically prefer this as a cooperative experience, I find it more rewarding, I find it more of a sense of teamwork, and the good news is, in order to play it as a cooperative experience, all you have to do is simply not include the murder token in your game. You don't have to change anything. This is not listed as a variant. It's not, at least I don't think it's listed. If it's listed as a variant, I missed it. But uh, in general, I don't think it's listed as a variant, is it? Winning the game, not a murder, not a murder, frequently asked questions. It may be in the frequently asked questions, I don't know, but um, I don't recall seeing it as a variant, but it's my variant. I, I prefer playing this game without the murder now because I just find it more rewarding and still challenging to go through. As far as I can see, others not liking, the cards are always a fit for multiple things, and it's just a question of trying to work your way through that as you go through it. There is no perfect information here. There's iterative communication as you go through it. There is no way for you to know as the, as the viewer in the first round of play, as the watcher, there's no way for you to know which one is the lady in red, whether the pet lover is over here or over here. There's no guarantee because there's so much uh, vagaries going on and you have to work with what you have. You can't always play things that are 100% there and so it, it, you kind of just to make guess certain guesses and then work towards that iterative degree of communication. So if you're looking for like that perfect mind meld, it's just not present. It takes those multiple rounds. It takes that doubling down and reacting to what players do in order to get to that win, which is again, why it's so difficult and why the murder just makes it more difficult. As far as final thoughts on Rear Window, I overall enjoyed this game. I wasn't expecting a ton from it, possibly because I don't know the IP. I mean, I'm familiar with the general concept of the Rear Window and the story behind it, but I never actually watched it. And so my lack of familiarity with it, I just figured it wouldn't be that intriguing a game. But the actual game works out very nicely. It teaches quickly. It Pay, plays fairly quickly. It is a two to five player game, despite what the box might say, and it's an enjoyable experience that does have you working with other players as you play cards down in this game. It doesn't really innovate in the genre, but what it does, it does well. There are a lot of games that kind of have that non-verbal communication of playing cards, trying to hint to your team wakes as you go through the experience, and I find Rear Window just does so well, giving enough of its own spin to the genre to feel like it stands out without, again, drastic innovation, but it still works well. Uh, for me, it's a 3.5 out of 5. I enjoy my time with it. Small quibbles around the murder aspect, but again, just take that or leave it. You don't have to play with that, and so I choose not to at this point. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Mysterium. If you like this game, Mysterium is very much going to be a similar game with a lot of overlap. And then secondly, if you want that kind of mastermind, iterative deduction kind of experience, Master Word is a great game I highly recommend. A bit of wordplay as you work with players through a degree of, hey, you got this many right, that many wrong, and this specific one right in that row. 
Master Word is basically a Word version of Mastermind that has that same iterative communication and reaction to players as you guide them towards the correct clue. And with that, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.